So, this project is a very simple project. I've not even filmed the building of this because it's so simple that it's literally using a Dremel cutting disc and hacking away at one of these Super Nintendo mini storage cases. Um, then I've used a couple of extra bits to build something a um, little bit special, which is a gift for my daughter who's off to uni today. Um, so despite this not being a super technical video, not a hard fix, not particularly worth a great deal of money, um, this is probably one of the best projects I've worked on in a long time because it's going to mean so much giving this to my daughter to take to university with her and to hopefully enjoy while she's up there studying in North Wales. So um, let's take a look at the project and we'll do a bit of an update. Cool. Okay, so this is a bit of a special project. Um, not super technical, not super expensive, um, but it's a nice project that I've been working on for my eldest daughter, Laura, who's moving off to Bangor University uh, tonight. So we're taking her up to North Wales today and then tomorrow morning we move her into Hall's residence. So yeah, it's gonna be a very strange and emotional time for me over the next couple of days. And this little project was a, uh, a little bit of a gift to give to her to take away with her. So. Um, it's a Super Nintendo carry case for your Super Nintendo Mini. This is the US version. My mate Steve gave me the case. Um, he bought two of them a while back and kindly gave me one as a as a gift. Um, and I'd never really known what to do with it. I haven't even got a Super Nintendo Mini, not even the UK version. Um, I've got the Mega Drive, I've got the NES, and I've got other mini consoles like the PlayStation and things, but I haven't got the Super Nintendo yet. Um, but I had some ideas from this from day one because it's got this nice panel on the front that store storage cards just to display different games and things in there um, and as you see that what I've done is taken a chunk out of the Dremel and installed the screen so within that screen obviously you'll be able to see the, the gameplay and everything else and then inside the case I'll give you a very quick overview is a Raspberry Pi a composite cable converter um, two power supplies, one for the screen and one for the Raspberry Pi and a mini speaker. So it's it's literally just plug and play. It's nothing too complex in here. Um, but I wanted to set it up something that she could take to university and play some of the classic games on there. So I've got um, a 128 gig card running on this. And I've got a load of games which I've got in my collection here, um, either on the arcade or on the, the cartridges behind me. Um, and I just wanted to give her something that she could take away and play on. So Super Mario Kart is one of her favorite games. She loves it on the Switch, but um, I'm not even sure whether she played it on the uh, Super Nintendo that much, but she will be, and I know she loves it on the DS too. So um, yeah, so I'll show you some videos of this running. I didn't do any videos of actually doing the conversion, but all I literally did is chop away the, the relevant size square for the screen to go into the front. I've glued that in with some hot glue and some tape and use some Capcom tape to um, protect all the electrics on the back of it. Um, and then I've used a composite um, cable to connect to the screen. The screen is um, a reversing camera screen uh, from a car uh, system. Very basic, cheap screen. Uh, the quality on it is okay, it's not great. Um, I think if I was gonna do this project again, I would update that to a HDMI screen so we get a bit, a bit of a quality output on that. Um, we've got a aux connected um, speaker in here again sound quality is okay it's not amazing as you'll see um, but it's it's a nice little setup uh, and also it's all powered by a Raspberry Pi so she's got the option if she wants to to take the Raspberry Pi out and connect it into a TV um, I'm gonna give her two of the PlayStation classic control pads which are here so these two control pads are going with it um, the USB because they're for the classic, classic mini, PlayStation classic mini. Um, so they connect straight into it and she's got two nice wired, good quality control pads. I did consider doing Bluetooth ones, but with Raspberry Pis and things like that, the last thing you want to do is mess around with pairing Bluetooth controllers and things all the time. Um, and I didn't want to go to the, the effort of buying 8-bit dues or something else like that, um, just for this project. So. These are, these are great little controllers and they play pretty much everything that you want to play on this system anyway. Um, 
Yeah, so I'm chuffed with it. I, I really do like this little project. It was nice to give it to her. She's seen it the other night and she was really chuffed with it. Um, there is lots of things, as I said, I would do differently in the future. I would probably put a nice battery in here and power everything off a battery in the future if I could. Um, I think you could put, probably put a 12 volt in here to power the screen and then put a uh, step down in there to power the Raspberry Pi as well. Um, there's loads loads of little things you could do with this, but this was just a basic uh, little gift as something to give her to take away with her. Um, and I'm pretty chuffed with it. It's pretty it's pretty good. I put some different intro videos on there. Um, I put some uh, different ROMs on there and things like that. As I said, I downloaded a quite a big ROM pack for her to start off with. Um, and I've done a load of favorites for the games that she um, should know about. Um, some of the games, the classic games like Simpsons Arcade and things like that, which I think she'll enjoy. So, yeah, hopefully she's going to enjoy this over the next couple of months, maybe years. Um, and I'll probably do an update in a, in a different version of one of these in the future with a, a, some different kit in there. Maybe send that up to her in the post or something if, if she needs a new upgraded version. So, cool. I'll, let's take a look at the, the, the system up and running, and then we'll do a quick wrap up. Okay, so that was it. That's that's pretty much how it is. It runs lovely. The it's a Raspberry Pi 3B inside of it, um, 3B plus actually. So it's it's fairly decent Raspberry Pi setup. Um, it's fairly fast. It runs the ROMs really nicely. Um, no glitches, no issues with the sound on there. Um, there's a couple of usual glitches when you're trying to load ROMs that just don't want to load, um, but that's that's emulation for you anyway. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm just really chuffed that I can give her something like this to take away with her and hopefully enjoy for the next year or two or three years in university, whether it'll last that long, I'm not sure. Um, but if it doesn't, I'm sure I can do an upgrade for her in the future. Cool, thank you for watching. I know it's a bit of a quick video and uh, I didn't really go into detail on how I set it up and things, but um, it, it really is that basic. If you've got any questions about um, setting it up to composite or anything else that I've done along the way, please ask in the comments down below because um, I'm not, I didn't film it as a production video. I filmed it just as a GIF video. So um, hope you've enjoyed that and I'll catch you soon.